Today, we are going to talk about my favorite spring crop, hands down, which happens to be a late spring perennial where I am here in zone 7A in New Jersey. And we're gonna be talking about yarrow, but specifically second year yarrow. And this is because I find that there's a lot of resources on first year yarrow, but not enough detailed information on how it produces for me, how the cuttings are for second year. So we're gonna talk about general planting maintenance, then we're gonna talk about productivity as well as growth habit in second year. Third, we're gonna talk about how I use these, how I sold these, and then last but not least, of course, we'll wrap it up with numbers because if you're new to my channel, I typically make videos on the business side of things, and but I will make videos like this here and there when I realize I'm looking for information, it doesn't exist, and so therefore other people might be looking for the same kind of information. So let's get started. Let's talk about planting and maintenance because this is yarrow that was put in in fall of 2022, which means that it overwintered for two full seasons before, per, before putting out a flush like this. Now, I would say that typically anything that can flower in the spring and survive the winter is going to do really, really well if you can overwinter it in the fall. And that means that in the first year, the yarrow will actually give you a little bit more productive and more robust blooms. You can start yarrow and put them out that spring and get a bloom that year, but it's just not going to be as robust. So these are now in the ground for two years and from a maintenance perspective, they could be like there's no plant that could be less maintenance than this. If anything, the only maintenance that you have is pruning it back, like most perennials, making sure that you're deadheading it so that it will continue to put up blooms for you throughout a season if you're cutting from it. So it doesn't love a ton of water. It doesn't want very fertilized soil. You can put this in your crappiest soil area and it should do really, really fine. So it is at this part of my space because I know that this is the top part of the slope. Uh, I have a very, very slight, but it is a slope that graduates downwards. And so I did not want to put the yarrow in a waterlogged area because it does not want to be completely wet. So that's really it from a planting consideration perspective. I put it in, I watered it, and then I never watered it again. And all the water it got was really from the rain. I never fertilized it. And you can see that I'm getting such a nice flush. So planting maintenance, super, super easy. One thing to note about yarrow is that if you want specific colors, especially like the vibrant berry colors that you see over here, you may need to replant every few years. Uh, I've heard that Lisa Mason Ziegler suggests every three years at the maximum. Uh, she actually does a new row or however many starts that she does uh, every single year. So she's rotating out yarrow constantly. And it's because when the yarrow self seeds or even just uh, reblooms, the the color is going to be more muted. And I think when it reseeds, it's really selecting for the more muted tones. So I was afraid of that happening in year two. And what I'm happy to say is that it didn't happen. So you can see that I still have very, very vibrant colors. As a precaution, I did take some of the plants and divide them out. And so now I have a duplicate stock of the more uh, jewel tones as well as tones that do really, really well for me wholesale. So overall, like I'm really, really happy with how the same yarrow produced in the second year from a color perspective. Now let's actually get into productivity and growth habit because this is where the money is. <laughs> I mean, I would say that in first year, each yarrow plant, a good plant, I got maybe like 10 to 12 stems off of, and that was like an exceptional plant. Most plants on average, I was getting like five to seven truly usable stems. And I would say that the presence of really, really robust, big fanning type of yarrow heads was about 20% of what I see in year two. Year two Euro is by far, by far outperforming year one from a stem length quality perspective, from a sturdiness perspective, the stems are a lot thicker. And third, the heads tend to be a lot more spread out, meaning you're not getting these like small little patchy types of Euro, you're getting big stems of Euro that are usable as great filler in a bouquet. And that was the piece where I guess I was looking for more information about was just what would the quality be like? And so I'm super, super happy with how these are. Second year yarrow, single plant. It's pretty easy to tell from here because you've got different colors that show you what a single aggregate plant is capable of producing. I have already been cutting on this patch. This patch right now is at its peak, 
which is why I wanted to show you what it looks like. But I would say on average, each plant is producing like 25 to 30 stems for me. It is nuts. So it is highly pro productive and just a plant where I am able to constantly cut from. I'm in my third week of cutting Yarrow right now. I would say the first week was a little bit slower going. Second week produced quite a bit. Third week, I'm like now swimming in Yarrow. It's coming out of my ears. And I will probably have Yarrow for at least another week, if not two weeks. And last year when I cut it all the way down, I made sure I deadheaded, I got a fall flush. The fall flush was nowhere near as nice as the first flush, but I would say that the second flush was still usable. And I did sell it actually to florists. So if you are on top of making sure you're cutting, deadheading, if you don't need to use it, you can continue to get blooms. It's just gonna be a little bit slower and not as great. So let's talk about the third piece over here, which is how did I use this yarrow? I would say that yarrow is one of those weird crops for me that has this strange pricing dynamic where I can actually fetch more wholesale because I'm selling to high-end designers I me mean, or I'm selling to designers using these in like more high-end weddings. So I can fetch more per stem than I ever would in a retail bouquet. And so I'm selling yarrow right now for about like $1.45 a stem. So what that means is that I am prioritizing my yarrow for wholesale. So last week, I would say about 85% of my yarrow all went wholesale. I did not cut it at all for my retail bouquets. And for those of you who are new, I sell predominantly wholesale. I have a little bit of retail, but my goal is to push more into wholesale because it's just, it works for me with a full-time job and everything. So yarrow does really, really well if you grow the right colors for weddings. Now, that being said, I know that it could be regional, not all florists around the country, around the world, want yarrow so you may not be in that situation as me but if you are only selling retail or you don't have florists who want them they do really really well in mixed bouquets they also do pretty well being sold as single bunches you can mix and match the colors you can just do a single bunch like i've seen very reputable farms just sell straight bunches of moonshine yarrow which is this bright yellow successfully so if you can sell a straight bunch of yarrow that's yellow successfully, I think you could sell these colors definitely successfully. And every single time I post on Instagram or Facebook this flower, I always get comments from customers being like, that is such a pretty, cute flower. The, the flowers are so petite. It looks so unique. So even though it's native to here, not everyone knows about it. So I think it's just really worth putting out there that yarrow is a versatile crop even if you were to sell retail, because if I were only selling retail, I'd be looking at crops that could do well in straight bunches as well as uh, in mixed bouquets. And if you get a big head, something like this, it will make for really, really great filler because you're only gonna need a couple of stems for filler. So last but not least, let's talk about numbers. I already started talking about how much I sell these stems wholesale. They're $1.45 and we're talking about this is like premium, top of the line, the best cutting type of stems. As the season progresses and as I get shorter stems or stems that are not as robust and great, the price is gonna drop down a bit. Uh, at our cooperative, we don't sell anything below a dollar a bunch, so a dollar per stem. But if we get to the stage where the yarrow feels a little bit puny, but it's still reasonable enough to work with, and I think that people would actually want to put these in things like bouquets or centerpieces, bud vases, then I might actually do something like 14 or 15 stems in a bunch for like $11. So when I think about how much this can fetch on a retail perspective, Realistically speaking, I'm probably not gonna get more than $1.50 per stem as a filler. So that's why, again, I'm trying to prioritize all the stems for wholesale because it is just a lot more efficient, cost-effective for me to sell straight bunches wholesale versus trying to put these into mixed bouquets. So I would say that I typically see Yarrow ranging from about like anywhere under a dollar to the high end, which is what I'm talking about. I have not seen Yarrow being priced above $1.50 anywhere else. Uh, that being said, like I've seen other growers in my cooperative sell Yarrow for $1.50 successfully. Again, if you grow the right colors for the right audience, you can fetch that kind of premium. So I didn't get a chance to say that this is the, uh, the summer berries selection. And so it's got a variety of colors. And from a color perspective, you've got something like a more creamy type of 
pink over here. This is like a very, very light, dusty rose pink. You've got something a little bit more saturated over here that feels more light magenta-y. Then you've got what I feel is a sorbet berry type of red. There's a huge mix in here. There's also a terracotta color that does really, really well. I think it's worth growing the mix because you get to see what colors come in. You can always divide using those plants that have the colors that you want. And if you're selling retail, it's always good to have a mix of color. So the main takeaway is I'm going to be dividing this yarrow and I'm hoping to at least double my production. I found out for whatever reason that I have a bit of a microclimate. I get my yarrow a lot earlier than other growers. By a lot earlier, I mean by a week and a half. But a week and a half when you're selling to florists who are using it for weddings, like one florist was looking for 250 stems the other week and I didn't have 250 stems. But if I did have 250 stems, really few other growers had yarrow. I could have really just sold all those yarrow stems at $1.45 each and made a pretty decent amount of money just from yarrow alone that week. And what I'm finding is that yarrow is just reliable. It can be really straight, assuming that you corral. So that's actually one thing that I forgot to talk about is that you want to make sure that you are either netting or corralling. I hate netting because harvesting is such a pain. So I basically corral with T-posts, some string. Most of these rows have at least two pieces of string to keep them upwards. You got to do it early so that they don't start falling over and then you're corralling it. And I find that if you have a yarrow plant that is just too big, you haven't divided it, it's gonna start naturally splitting in the middle, which is what is happening over here. And so that makes the stems less usable for floristry sales, but it still makes it actually quite usable for retail bouquets. There have been very few super wonky stems to the point where I can't use them in anything, but even if the head kind of twirls a little bit, it's still usable in a retail bouquet, but of course it's just a lot easier to work with straight stems. So I'm gonna be at least doubling my Euro production. I think if you are selling retail bouquets, you are looking for a maintenance-free crop that is going to bloom for you sometime in the mid to late spring for most of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Yarrow is a really, really great crop that you should consider. You can buy it from plugs, you can buy it from seed, and it is definitely one of the most profitable crops because of how low maintenance it is, how it comes back every single year, and how productive it is. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I actually have a Yarrow 101 video that I did last year. If you guys want to see how I harvest and all of the more beginner type of Yarrow questions, since this is only focused on year two. And thank you so much for, watch for watching and I'll see you in the next video.